So, since I'm a guru of retroduction, okay, which is a, one of the ancient lost secrets of the Pythagoreans and the Platonists for making uh, discoveries which are not directly objectively um, observable, it's actually a little bit deeper than that, and definitely an expert on field theory, my book on magnetism is incredibly popular, I'm probably one of the few people that, like, loves reading on field theory. I may get a conjecture and... Uh, it's not what we conjecture, it'll be perfectly logical, it'll be perfectly based and rooted in firmly retroduction. By the way, if you don't know what the right hand rule is, you should look it up. You probably didn't get any education in high school or college about uh, field theory, but look, just type in right hand rule, okay? It's actually about understanding the natures of fields, so when I say right hand rule, you're going to have to educate yourself on what the right hand rule is. So if I were to make a conclusion based upon countless observations, and we're talking about unidentified flying objects here, and I'm not giving my support one way, or to, one way or the other towards that, but if we were to make logical, retroductive conclusions about the nature of photographs, whether they be real or fake, I assume at least 30% of them have to be real. Like, let's, let's, let's make 30% of them, right? Of course, UFO simply means unidentified. There's a lot of stuff that's unidentified, but we're going to make uh, conclusions based upon what I know about field theory, which is a lot, and uh, connect that and apply retroduction. So what I know about field theory and the observations of these saucer-shaped craft, um, use retroduction and make a hyper-logical statement and conclusion, okay, perfectly in line with the right-hand rule, about the nature of the geometry of these craft. Since, but first we actually have to make a statement before engaging in retroduction. And that is the fact that what people call magnetic attraction, which absolutely does not exist because magnetism denotatively is force in motion and is centrifugal, not centripetal and inertia and acceleration. What people call magnetic attraction and what he, stupid human beings, and humans are intellectually unevolved as it pertains to field theory, at least 99.999% of them are, and what we call gravity is one and the same thing. The only nuance is that one is point source and the other one is incoherent mutual mass acceleration, i.e. gravity. It's the same difference between a 5-watt light bulb and a 5-watt laser. So what the hell is the difference between a 5-watt light bulb and a 5-watt laser? Both are 5 watts, right? They're both... Uh, uh, field perturbations, specifically uh, EMR, electromagnetic radiation. So what's the distinction? You know, 5 watt light bulb's useless to read a book by, and a 5 watt light bulb, a 5 watt laser, excuse me, will burn a hole in your ass, right? So the distinction and differentiation is that one is uh, point source and the other one is incoherent. So, the actual, by the way, the only difference between uh, gravity and so-called magnetic attraction, which is not magnetism based at all, it is actually uh, dielectric is that the magnet, the mutual acceleration between the two masses, is coherent. Point source is multiplicative. This is why a 5 watt laser is infinitely more dangerous than a 5 watt light bulb, which is infinitely not dangerous, infinitely harmless. You can't even read a book by a 5 watt light bulb. A 5 watt laser will burn a, a hole in the book you're trying to read with a 5 watt light bulb. So, making the statement that, and this is not my opinion, and this is not retroduction, this is an absolute fact, is that what we call gravity, and what we call so-called magnetic attraction, which is not based in magnetism at all, is one and the same thing. And of course, the conjugate geometry that makes up the entire universe is the conjugate geometry of force of motion, inertia, and acceleration. Respectively, one is an inverse image of the other. One is the torus, that is the geometry of force and motion, i.e. magnetism. One is the hyperboloid, or an hourglass shape. The negative image of an hourglass shape, if you're to take the negative of that, is a torus. The negative image of a torus is the hyperboloid. These saucer-shaped vehicles, and I'm not making any bold statements about them, uh, explic uh, uh, demonstrably, excuse me, these saucer-shaped craft have the geometry of a torus. It is an absolute fact that since gravity is mutual mass acceleration, i.e. incoherent dielectric acceleration, no different than magnetism, except one is incoherent, the other one is point source in the case of the magnet. 
that these toroidal shaped, i.e. saucer shaped, a saucer is nothing other than a flat torus, okay? Obviously the center part of a torus would be where potentially human or non-human occupants would be. The uh, toroidal geometry of these saucer shaped craft must, and the only way, and since everything is electrical and everything obeys the right hand rule, look up, I'm going to pause while you look up what the hell the right hand rule is. Everything is they say everything is electrical, but elect electricity is a hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism. Everything is specifically dielectricity and magnetism. The only way any vehicle in the universe could work as an anti-gravity, I hate the word uh, anti-gravity because it's really nonsensical. Since we're actually talking about the right-hand rule, the only way a magnetic slash dielectric or an electrical vehicle could work against mutual mass acceleration, obviously repelling gravity, right? Repelling acceleration. Because gravity is not a force, it's an acceleration. Okay, there's no force involved, obviously so. The reason why there's no force involved in gravity is because it's dielectric. It's the same thing with magnetism. When you actually take two magnets here and you like let go of them, they will mutually accelerate. Right? If you take two incoherent masses like this book and this lens cap, they're not going to accelerate. I mean, if you actually take two giant lead masses, you can actually see that they will deflect towards one another very, very slightly. But once again, we're talking about incoherent mutual mass acceleration. The only way so-called anti-gravity can work is, wait for it, the right-hand rule. And the only way a right-hand rule can apply to a craft that is trying to keep its ass off the ground, right, is an omnidirectional toroidal magnetic field. Since we're talking about omnidirectional, non-point source, mutual mass acceleration. No, I did not give you fancy jargon when I said that. Replay that part if you want to again. The only way to engage in the inverse of mutual mass acceleration is an omnidirectional, toroidal, everything's the right hand rule. The only way you could actually levitate something off of the ground, or even accelerate off of the ground, is an omnidirectional toroidal magnetic field. It can't be in one direction, it has to be omnidirectional force vector. And, and also applying retroduction to this, the accelerometer of such a vehicle would work in increasing the power output as acceleration increases and decreasing the power as acceleration decreases. So an accelerometer would be linked to the output of the omnidirectional magnetic force vector of said vehicle. The reason why these vehicles are saucer shaped, like I said, they're, they're nothing other than flat toroids, okay? Flat toroidals. And the only reason they don't have a hole in the middle is because that hole in the middle is being occupied by persons or living creatures, right? The only way such a vehicle can work without, um, we're talking about, talking about explosion technology, which is current human technology, rockets, right? We're talking about literal explosion technology instead of electrical, because everything is the right hand rule, right? Everything is the right hand rule. The only way to actually keep such a vehicle off the ground or accelerating into the ground is to have an omnidirectional force vector field that is working in opposition to the mutual mass acceleration of, say, the Earth and that vehicle, because everything is the right-hand rule. That is the reason why these vehicles are saucer-shaped. Now you're going to say, well, not all of them are saucer-shaped. Very true. If pictures, 30% of the pictures, let's say 30% of the pictures are true. That's true. They wouldn't have to be saucer-shaped, but they would actually have to have that saucer toroidal field generator in some, I mean, it could be a square, square vehicle, but it would still have to have that same toroidal field generator inside of it. The only logical reason why most of these seem to be saucer shaped by using both inference and retroduction is that the inducement of the right hand rule of that toroidal omnidirectional force vector, i.e. magnetism, would not be induced in the actual vehicle itself. Therefore, the vehicle itself would be toroidal, such that the actual inducement of the field at the outer lip where it's generated would be into free... I hate using the word free space. But I mean, for lack of a nuance, it would have to be in free space so that the field is not being induced in the actual vehicle itself. Um, but there's no way around this. 
Other than explosion technology, i.e. rockets, so on and so forth, the only way a vehicle could keep itself above ground and accelerate away from ground, since, of course, the Earth and every other celestial body out there other than a neutron star is incoherent mutual mass acceleration. This is two masses. You could actually look this up. Like you take two giant lead balls and they let them free swing. They notice the deflection. They'll actually pull towards one another. I mean, gravity. Gravity is not a force. It's an acceleration. And the only acceleration which is not force is dielectric. This is why, wait for it, there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. Magnetic attraction is bullshit. The only reason why stupid human beings have been calling magnets accelerating towards one another magnetic attraction is because thousands and thousands of years of stupid, intellectually unevolved, dumbass humans have been looking at lodestones, which are naturally occurring. You know, people have been playing with those for thousands. The Chinese, the Greeks, everybody's like, oh my God, they got these two lodestones. Rock, you know, rocks you find out. You know, Coolest thing on earth. They probably thought it was magical for thousands and thousands of years. Oh my God, you let go of them and they accelerate towards one another. Well, eventually they knew that these were uh, magnetized objects. Well, this must be magnetic attraction. Human beings still call mutual mass acceleration of point source objects magnetic attraction. It has nothing to do with magnetism. Of course, human beings don't understand what magnetism is. Magnetism is the dielectric field. It's the expression of the loss of inertia as evidenced by the conjugate geometry of force and motion, inertia, and acceleration. Everything's capacitance, resistance, magnetic permeability, dielectric permittivity, and everything in the universe obeys the fucking right-hand rule. That is, wait for it, why those vehicles are shaped like a torus. The fact that the center is not hollow doesn't mean anything. That would be where the crew cabin would be at. That is the reason, the only logical reason by applying logic and platonic retroduction as to why these UFOs, or these uh, non-Earth vehicles, are saucer-shaped. That is the only logical explanation for it. There is nothing, anything else would completely crucify Occam's razor, would crucify logic, would crucify retroduction, and would crucify everything that I know about field theory, which is a shitload. Excuse my bad language there. Someone's going to send me an email like, my, heard, my child heard you say that cuss word and I'm so angry. <laughs> I hope you like this video. This is a video on retroduction applied to UFOs. If you like this video, click the link below or you can send me an email telling me how much you hate me. <laughs> Either way, it's all good. Life is short and shitty. Seek wisdom. Peace out, Girl Scout.